a nice day for a walk in the woods. Um, this is the month of July and I'm in southwestern Finland. This is a time of year when uh, you know, berries start to ripen. There's a lot of blueberries around. You can see them. It's just it's been a very wet summer so and, and, and occasionally sunny so it seems to suit the blueberries well so we have a very a very nice berry picking year ahead of us. Uh, also in July you, it's still possible to harvest birch bark which I intend to do during this project because uh, I have an axe and I need to make a blade cover for it. Since I don't have a blade cover for it currently I can't carry it in my backpack because that will be a safety issue. This would eventually, since it's, fat, since it's sharp, it would eventually cut through the backpack and I might even injure myself so that's why a blade cover is always a good idea when you have a small axe like this which you want to carry around so and I'm going to show you how to make one quite easily so let's just proceed and see if we can find any good birches which we can harvest birch bark from see what we can find this is the spot where are a lot of birches growing it's a small dip in the landscape so it's a more wet wet environment and, and birches really enjoy uh, wetlands like this so I'm sure I'll find very good birches from here from which I can harvest the birch bark I need this birch tree here is uh, very well suited for my uh, project with the axe blade cover. Uh, I'm looking for a birch with a medium sized birch that has uh, birch bark of an adequate thickness. No, it doesn't have to be too, it's, it's, I want more like paper cardboard like thickness on my birch bark for this particular project. And as birches grow, also the thickness of the uh, birch bark will grow in layers with them so every year a birch grows it will achieve one more layer of birch bark to it so so this when I harvest this I just need a one big piece straight off the tree and I try to look for a spot on the tree which is fairly knotless because the knots will interfere with the removal of the birch bark so this looks like a good segment for me with only a small knot in the center so what I'll do is I'll, I'll make a yeah, cut lengthwise and start bending up the birch bark from that cut onward. We'll see. Just a cut and uh, we'll see how it starts it starts to come off. Yeah, it comes up nicely. So, yes. It's very very nice. Just come up really nicely. The result is a very nice big thick sheet of birch bark with, which will be excellent for my project and in fact I'm gonna harvest even another piece as well because I've seen a lot of blueberries around and since I didn't bring a basket along I'm also gonna make an improvised basket for collecting some blueberries home while I'm in the forest so Patient. 
I'm careful when you do this and not force it. No. Just keep in mind every time you have a nut or a, some type of a other injury on the tree trunk, then then the birch bark will tend to snag on those segments. So you just have to be careful and follow it up and, and use your knife as much as possible to uh, without cutting. This is what a birch tree looks like when it's been harvested of birch bark. As you can see, uh, there's a clear difference between the region that still re retains its birch bark to the uh, area of the tree which has, has been uh, deprived of it. So the only thing that remains here is the dark inner bark of the tree. Uh, the tree is still very alive and well. I think it was about a year ago when I harvested this segment of birch bark of it. and. Uh, and it doesn't seem to have taken any uh, major trauma or has, hasn't been damaged in any way. There's still a thick canopy of leaves, the tree continues growing and in fact I would go as far as say that, that if you are careful when harvesting birch bark you won't do any permanent injury to the trees other than there's this uh, aspect of them being less attractive. Making a, uh, a quick basket out of uh, birch bark is really fast and simple. I'm gonna show you how you do it. So uh, the only thing you need, like in my case, you need a fairly large chunk of birch bark, which you just collect it. And it's fresh, so that's it means it's easily pliable. carefully along the uh, edge like this. It's uh, easy when it's fresh because it won't break that. Won't be that easy to break because it's fresh. See? I want to make a deep, deep basket box because I want to pick a lot of blueberries. So uh, this will be nice enough there. And I'll do the same thing, the same width on the ends as well. See? So I'll have to pull them over as well. This. So we get the same approximate height of the sides of the box.
stuff. I've been picking these berries for maybe half an hour already. I have a few deciliters worth of blueberries in this basket of mine. Picking blueberries really is a good pastime, and it, and, uh, you know, and they really, they taste good and uh, are really healthy, healthy sound food. Uh, I guess there's enough for to make a decent sized blueberry pancake. So, which is more than I had before I came to the forest. So. Um, in Finland and in the Nordic countries, we have a, a common right of access, uh, which is roughly, well, if you translate it from a Swedish, allemansrätt, it means li literally the right of all men. So it's up to anyone to pick berries if they want anywhere, uh, as long as they're not in the, uh, close to anybody's home and, and disturbing people at their home. But if you're in the forest, you can just pick berries wherever you find them. It's your right. And it's a good right because there's a lot of abundance of berries and and mushrooms in the forest this time of year, which which goes to waste. So, uh, so we. Uh, I wish more people would be uh, out picking berries, but I guess it's not that popular anymore because it's more easier to, and convenient to buy it in the supermarket than pick them yourself. Thunder storm coming along, so I think it's about time we start finishing off this uh, axe sheet project. So remember, I wanted to make a blade car for this axe, and in order to do that, we have to first check with this piece of birch bark we collected that it's uh, that we find a nice white spot for it. So, what we need to do is we need to um, make the sheet wide enough to fit the axe head, the blade. So, if we look a rough measure here, we see that it needs to be at least this wide, so that's where I'm going to start cutting it. First, just marking with my fingers, and then using my knife to do the job. What we need to do now is to uh, take this piece we cut out. You can even clean it a little if you want to. See, it comes this other more flimsy bark comes off quite nicely too. Bye scraping it off like this roughly. And once you've done that, we're gonna start uh, checking the size of this. So first of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold it over once. Let's see what's the point. We're gonna fold it over, about roughly here. Let's see, yep. That'll be a good measurement. And uh, what I wanna do now is to make something that would here like a wallet to begin with. So, so I'm gonna fold it over a couple of times and cut it off somewhere here to be exact. That's about where I'll clean as cut this. Just using your the edge of your knife. And, uh, well, I just need to this nice and neat. Okay. So we'll see. I'll fold it again. See how it looks. Yeah. Very nice. It's as I said. It will it will appear like a wallet. Mhm. Mm because the idea is that we'll uh, insert the blade into this middle of this wallet. This. That's pretty much the design. Uh, I also want to strengthen this part of this here because there's just one piece of folded birch bark here, and uh, as this blade is is quite sharp, I wanna I wanna make this a bit stronger. So what I'll do is I'll insert this additional piece which which was left over. You see, it's about long enough. Yeah, and actually I have to even have to cut it a bit to make it fit. Inside, so let's see. I'm gonna cut it like this. Here.
Okay. And I'm gonna just insert it inside this robot now. Okay. So this looks okay. Push it in. Uh -huh. Yep. It's just about right. Just about right. Okay. Okay, okay. Looks good. It seems to fit. So what I want just need to uh, there's a bit of too much material here and there, so I'm just gonna thin it off a bit around here. Let's see. Yeah, I can lose a centimeter on one side. Just clean it up a bit. That's about it. Perfect. This will pretty much do. And next stage is to um, wrap this around the, uh, the sheet. So what I'll do is I'll insert one end inside one of the side pockets here. So see, that's what my that's my starting point. Mm -hmm. Push it up to the edge. I have to clean it up a bit here as well. See. Okay, it's neat. And then I'll start wrapping. I'll give it a good, good tight grip. This. And you don't want to overlap, you want to from the next round, just beside the uh, previous one. Okay, so I'll also make three laps, and this is the third lap, and at this point, what I want to do is I want to insert this end underneath the uh, first previous wrapping. This pull it out the side. This okay. Just be careful not to. This really has to be fresh when you do it because otherwise this would be too the birch bark would be too brittle if it's too dry and old. So this needs to be fairly fresh when you do it. Okay, now I'll pull it here. Now I'm just going to insert it underneath here. And then the next, and this will make it really a, a nice tight package. See? And I'm just going to pull it in nicely. And uh, see, yep. And just cut out the excessive part. Slip that, and I think we're done. Just our little pockets done. So let's see. Here's the axe and here's the sheet. Let's see if it fits. Oh yeah, perfect fit. And since we pull it on quite tightly, it, it really uh, really hugs to the blade, so so it won't slip. It sticks to the blade quite nicely, so now I'm able to just put this in my backpack and carry it around just about anywhere without being worried about in injuring myself.